Africa's biggest bank, Standard Bank, is predicting a stronger growth rate of about 3.2% for Ghana in 2024, higher than that of the International Monetary Fund, IMF. The fund had earlier projected a 2.8% rate for the country. Joining me to unpack this is Paul Yofrimpong. He is a development economist and the executive director, Africa China Center for Policy and Advisory. Thank you, Paul, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's look at this now. We have Standard Bank's projection, which is about 3.2%, and that of IMF is 2.8%. Which of these do you align more with? <laughs> well, I think it's very, 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 I think I'll just be in the middle of that. Okay. Uh, of course, um, there are some of these numbers keep, keep coming up as and when uh, they monitor certain developments that are happening. I think the Standard Bank's own is highly optimistic. Uh, I believe is so much optimistic uh, in terms of what the, the economy can actually grow to to become. Uh, the IMF one is more uh, cautionary, uh, very conservative in that respect because they know what they're dealing with. They are already deep uh, in, 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 in the hands with, with the Ghana government because we are currently under IMF program. So they really, I believe, understand the dynamics in terms of what is on the table what a country has been dealing with, the country is dealing with, and what could potentially affect the country's potential uh, growth in this year. So I believe that, whilst I know the IMF one is conservative, I believe that the Standard Bank too is too much optimistic. I believe uh, in the middle we can we can strike a balance uh, there. Okay, so let's look at, look at this particular growth now. Uh, the growth is actually premised on the services sector, so I think we just need to pay attention to it because looking at figures from 2022, the share of the services sector in Ghana's GDP was about 42.03%, and I believe there is room for more. So what are your recommendations for deepening this sector so we can probably hit that optimistic um, uh, projection? Yeah, even, even the government uh, budget for 2024, the projection is that the service sector is looking about 6.3%. Even as a quarter two of 2024. Uh, so I believe that it's all in line with the fact that the service sector has been a huge contributor to Ghana's uh, growth, of course, followed by agriculture, which is very essential. I believe that if we can pay more attention to that sector as well, we can actually be able to boost uh, uh, the growth. So I believe that they're all in line in terms of government projection for the year. And of course, what, what the IMF and the Standard Bank is projecting. There are a lot of nuances happening in the Ghanaian economy, as you speak. Uh, in the beginning, I think the government changed most of the happenings on a prospects of the 19, and then you talk about the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis, but now it's beyond that because you look around the world today, there are a lot of geopolitical happening that could easily, easily influence or impact what is happening uh, in Ghana, especially what happens to the U.S. economy is very essential. What happens to the Chinese economy is very essential. All of that can actually affect, you know, uh, what we are expected to happen in Ghana in the year and the years to come. So I believe that the government earlier, as I said, was dealing with some of the issues. Now we're talking about a lot of, you know, instabilities in the Ghanaian economy. Uh, the lot of price hikes and inflation was all time high a couple of months ago. It's still very high, double digit, in the highest of double digit. As we speak, so the governments, you know, have to be, you know, very strategic to try and diversify as much as they can, and not rely on one sector being a huge contributor to the growth, like the service sector. I think there has to be a room for diversification. Make sure that there's a boost in all sectors so that they can offset each other in case there's any shock uh, in any of the sector that's hugely contributing the growth. I mean, I like that you've actually um, focused on two sectors, but beyond this. Two sectors. Are there other sectors, you know, that have the potential to deliver good numbers? And when you're talking about diversification, I'm sure sometimes you have to pick out one or two sectors, you know, to say this is or these are the areas we want to focus on or pay attention to. What would be your own recommendation? I, I think it's for me, it's just about two of the other sectors that I believe are, has huge potential. One of them is the tourism sector. I think Ghana has a rich history uh, and, and DAO is very uh, amazing. Uh, you know, tourist, you know, sector destination that can actually become a huge potential. <coughs> Again, uh, we are providing a very stable environment. As you can see, a lot of uh, people are staying here, as part of staying here, 
and a lot of you know potential to host some of the leading uh, conferences and, and, and you know, forums in, in the region. And all of that can boost the tourism sector in terms of hospitality you know, sector as well. So I believe that the tourism sector is very key if only the government can be very strategic in, in providing the right resources and policy and program that can attract. In the year, I think in 20, uh, I think prior to COVID, we had a year of 10. It was very massive. I'm sure maybe you guys discuss about it, where the government ran a global campaign of trying to get people in the diaspora to visit Ghana to return home. And they need to check the numbers in terms of the the boost to the economy within that period was very much that shows the potential of the tourism sector for, for the country. The other sector I want to look at is the creative industry uh, sector, which has not been tapped you know, really much. I believe that that also has a huge potential. I mean, if you pick a place that are even the sports, the sports sector, let's take the football, as, as, as we all know, Ghana is a football uh, a country. At the point, I think last year, the report that I, I glanced my hands on was that Ghana was among the top five exporters of football talent to zero and other parts of the world. But then when it comes to earnings for the country, uh, we were not even among the top 50 uh, uh, countries that earn most from football. So we are uh, the top five exporters of footballers to the rest of the world, but we're not among the top 50 earners, you know, top 50 earners in terms of uh, football. I believe that these are things that have got to be policies and programs and governments being conscious of what the country can do in terms of that. I mean, look at the talent that we have. You can actually manage it, develop your coast uh, football system in such a way that you look to export more talent. All right. And that can generate a lot of So I believe that these two additional sectors can be a game changer for the country if they're able to put the right policies and the government can focus on it. All right, you talked about, you know, uh, maybe something or if one of the factors that can actually pose as risks to growth. And what, what you talked about was geopolitics. So is there something, you know, Ghana can do, you know, to mitigate the risks, you know, when we look at geopolitics? Because when you look at even El Nino, really. So when you look at El Nino and then you look at geopolitics, these are some of the things you might say that the country doesn't necessarily have control over. But how can these risks be mitigated? I think we just have to be strategic in our alignment. Um, in terms of what we do out there, which with all countries, I believe that we have to widen our net uh, and, and, and strategically look at the interest of all parties that we are dealing with. I think it's very key and not to be boxed into trying to take side because of what we need to do. We have to be strategic in that. We have to take your position that as a country, this is where we are, this is where we are, our priorities are so that we don't get ourselves entangled in any other uh, uh, geopolitical happening. For example, issues about the Russia, Ukraine, the US, China, uh, uh, trade wars. We need to be strategic about some of these happenings and make sure that we are not caught up in the middle of, 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 of a war or some uh, trade theft that we are not part of. But we have to always be looking out for the interests of Ghana, the interests of our country, the issue about even digitalization going on, where we believe that as a country where we are, for some of us, we believe that we need to be strategic about the, the dominance of the US or other major currencies in the country. It's about time we try to uh, move up the value chain in terms of trading with partners in local currencies. That way, it reduces the pressure on our local currencies, which again leads to inflation and all of it. So I believe that we have to be strategic in some of these things and the era where the country will be forced to take side for any other country should come to an end. We need to decide for ourselves that at this point, this partner, the interests of this partner are like interest, and therefore with this partner, not because we are under a certain obligation by other partner to take side. I believe these are things that we can do so that we can limit the risk of geopolitics going forward. Rightly said. I would have loved to hear what you have to say about El Nino, but let, let, let's leave that there because I mean, we're pressed for time. Historically, I would say Ghana's economy has been expanding by 5% year on year until COVID happened. Yeah, I mean, so how soon do you think Ghana can get back to such levels? Is it something that can happen anytime soon? Or what, what are the things, you know, that must be in place for this to happen? Yeah, I, I think it, it is a, it's, it's, it's a, I'll put it in the medium term. I don't think it's a, in, the, in the short term we're going to uh, really, really be back because we've been through a deep hole uh, and a lot of things to recover before we can get to the pre-pandemic levels of 2018-2019. Uh, we are dealing with a lot of issues now. The country is now under a three-year IMF program, as you know. So at least in the, in the, in the medium term, unless we are 
kind of exiting from these kind of IMF, you know, uh, uh, you know bail out uh, to be really ensured that we can project a very credible economy that is very resilient, that can attract a lot of investment. Until then, I believe that it's going to be uh, growth, you know, that is not going to be exponential. We're going to see gradual, you know, growth going forward. I believe that even now, we are still not even done with some of the restructuring that we are doing in terms of the standard debt restructuring that the government is still going on with the official creditors committee, with the international bondholders and all of that. I believe that all of this has to happen first before uh, the country can confidently uh, see that you're on your part of full recovery uh, to the, to the pre-pandemic level. Absolutely. I won't let you go without, you know, yes, uh, talking. Okay. Can I go ahead now? Okay. So I would like to go without putting this there. You know, the Ghanaian government, in collaboration with the National Communications Authority, is actually in discussions with the Gambia and Benin, uh, that's the Benin Republic, to introduce free mobile roaming services. How impressed are you about this, and what could be the possible impact of this move? I think I think it's, it's all part of the, the drive for us as a continent that it has to be a way where we can do business across borders very easily. There are a lot of constraints, a lot of restrictions as a continent uh, where, uh, you know, even among ourselves, you know, communication is very uh, limited. I believe that this can all be a part of the drive under the Africa continent of the area, under the agenda 26 of the African continent. And this summarizes the, the framework of the COAS because there are a lot of things that we can actually harmonize. There are a lot of things that countries will have the political we can do to ease the, 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 the rate of doing business across the continent, across the region, to actually fast track how businesses can communicate. There are a lot of solutions that can be put to the table to eliminate you know, the, the, the non-physical barriers, as, as we say. So I believe that this is a step in the right direction. The government in the region can stay committed to some of these uh, uh, technology innovation that can help uh, bridge the gap in terms of trade and people to exchanges. I think it's a welcome development. I believe that, as the government, the vice president said, something already signed with Togo and I'm doing Benin, uh, and, and of course with uh, Benin and other okay. Gambia. I believe that's something that can be spun across the region and right. can help you know, and can contribute to the continent's own vision of connectivity. Paul, you're from Pong, Development Economist and Executive Director, African China Center for Policy and Advisory. Thank you for your thoughts on the show today. Thank you for having me.